The West Indian manatee, or sea cow, is a plant-eating aquatic mammal native to the state of Florida. Hunted by Indians and early settlers, manatees have survived many threats over hundreds of years. Today, manatees are faced with other dangers in Florida's waterways that threaten their survival. These gentle creatures are in danger of extinction because of high mortality rate associated with human interactions, a low reproductive rate, and loss of habitat. Manatees are gentle, slow-moving creatures. They can live in fresh or salt water, preferring the shallow, slow-moving rivers, bays, and estuaries of Florida's waterways. Although they have thick skin, they cannot tolerate cold weather and seek out warm water temperatures in winter. The search for warm water motivates their annual winter migrations to various warm water refuges located throughout the state. Manatees are gray or gray-brown in color and typically grow 9 to 10 feet long and weigh 1,000 pounds. Although they are large animals, manatees are extremely difficult to see above the water because they are usually submerged. Only a small portion of the animal, such as the nose or part of the head, can be seen above the water when they surface to breathe. The nose and head are usually only out of the water for a few seconds when a breath is taken. Then the animal immediately submerges again. Nostrils on the upper surface of the snout operate like valves, closing tightly when submerged. Manatees surface to breathe every few minutes when active and may surface only every 10 to 15 minutes when resting. When watching for manatees, it is important to be patient and alert in order to notice the few seconds an animal may break the surface of the water to take a breath. Occasionally, a manatee's back, tail, or flipper can also be seen breaking the surface of the water when an animal is diving back down below the surface. If conditions are quiet and an animal is close by, they can sometimes be heard taking a breath. Many activities that occur in water can injure or kill manatees, but the likelihood of this happening can be decreased if certain precautions are taken. One of these precautions is a watch program, where observers are present to stop activities if a manatee comes within range of danger. Watch program protocols for manatees should be followed for all marine species, such as dolphins, turtles, and whales. Observers should be located as high above the water as possible, such as on bridges, for the best vantage point to see manatees. For all watch programs, manatees must not be herded away or harassed into leaving. Though it may be tempting, do not feed or provide water to manatees. Actions which alter a manatee's natural behavior, such as these, are considered harassment and are against the law. There are basically two types of watch programs, a regular watch, which does not require an aerial survey, and an extensive watch, which includes an aerial survey. For projects that are expected to pose significant risk to endangered animals, only the most experienced observers will be approved. A regular watch can require anywhere from one to five observers, and their locations are land-based and boat-based. The level of experience required for observers depends on the activity and its proximity to areas where manatees congregate. Manatees have been injured and killed by boats used in work projects, such as cruise shuttle boats, tugboats, or barges. All work boats should operate at idle speed and stay in the deepest portions of the waterway. Avoid boating over seagrass beds and shallow areas. Observers should watch for manatees while the boats are moving, and boats should stop if a manatee comes within 50 feet of the boat. The actual dredges themselves also pose a risk of injuring manatees. 
Observers should watch for manatees while the dredge is in operation, and equipment should be shut off if a manatee comes within 50 feet of the in-water work or work vessels. Manatees are hard to see during the day and are impossible to see at night, even with floodlights. For areas where manatees are expected to be present in large numbers, dredging and boat operations should be performed only in the daytime when observers are effective. Manatees can become entangled and drown in turbidity barriers put into the water during dredging operations. These barriers should be securely fastened and monitored frequently for the presence of manatees. Construction debris in the water can also result in serious injury or death. If a manatee ingests such litter as plastic or rope, internal injuries can result in death. You should stop work if a manatee comes within 50 feet of all other types of in-water work, such as installation or removal of pilings, docking structures, bulkheads, sea walls, riprap, bridge fenders, artificial reefs, or mooring buoys. An extensive watch can require up to 20 observers because of the type activity or large extent of the project's boundaries. These extensive watch programs usually include an observer in an airplane or a helicopter and additional observers on land-based positions and in boats. The level of experience required for observers depends on the activity and its proximity to areas where manatees congregate. The aerial observer is considered the primary or lead observer and the land-based and boat-based observers are considered secondary observers. An extensive watch program, including an aerial observer, would be required for all blasting activities, such as bridge demolition, movie productions, or dredging. A safety zone will be calculated based on the amount of explosives, and no blasting should take place if a manatee is within 300 feet of this safety radius zone. An extensive watch is also required for boat races and some marine events that have large numbers of boats, such as boat parades. If a manatee comes within 500 feet of the race course, the race should be stopped. Observers have several other responsibilities besides halting an activity if an animal comes within a certain distance. Another responsibility is to report incidents, injuries, or deaths to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Another responsibility is to maintain logs of sightings and to summarize these logs into a final report at the end of a project. If a project is ongoing, reports may need to be submitted annually. If there were no sightings, logs and reports should still be recorded and submitted in order to comply with permit conditions. Permit conditions often require approved observers. These observers must be approved by the wildlife agencies as well as the permitting agencies. In order to approve observers, these agencies review qualifications which depend largely on the amount of experience a person has had observing animals. Early experience can be gained by volunteering as an additional observer in watch programs or by participating as a backup observer for primary or secondary observers. Requests for approval to be an observer in a watch program should be consistent with past experience. For example, if you are requesting to be a primary observer in an airplane, you must have adequate previous experience as a primary observer in aerial surveys. For projects that are expected to pose a significant risk to marine animals, only the most experienced observers will be approved. Experience must be documented by keeping a record of past jobs as an observer, both paid or volunteer, including description and location of project, number of hours observed, and number of animals seen.